Good evening, saints. It's my pleasure to share with you the gospel of Jesus and to give you encouragement in this wonderful time that we are experiencing a moment of prayer even in the midst of a storm that is raging around us. So I invite us to pray so that we can receive the Spirit and the guidance of the Holy Spirit so that He can teach us all truth. Shall we pray? Our God and our Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for the time that we're going to share in this uh, Vespas. We ask that your Holy Spirit will continue to breathe your thoughts and your words into our hearts to give us courage and hope. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Our devotion for this evening is entitled, It is Time. It is time. And our scripture reading will come from the book of Joshua, chapter 5, verse 13 to verse 16. And it's about the story of Joshua as he faced the greatest challenge of his life, which was the battle at Jericho. Joshua, chapter 5, verse 13 to verse 15. So the Bible says, And it came to pass, when Joshua was by Jericho, that his, he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, a man stood opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? Verse 14, so he answered, no, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshiped and said, what does my Lord say to his servant? Then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, take off your sandals off your feet for the place where you stand is holy and Joshua did so it is time when Joshua was encountering Jer Jericho he did not know what he needed to do I say this in a context because Joshua was a man of war he knew how to fight battles and how to win them and for those of you who have read Joshua chapter 1, uh, verse 6 to verse 9, there God gives Joshua the charge. He tells him to be courageous, to be strong and courageous, and not to be afraid because God would go for him. In fact, in verse 8, the Bible says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. God himself had given Joshua the formula for success, and that was to meditate on God's word and to spend time with God. And that's how Joshua would prosper and be successful. So Joshua, following God's instruction, when faced with the battle of Jericho, goes to the wall of Jericho. And there he is meditating, he is thinking about how he will win this battle. And amazingly, as he is there meditating, there appears a man of war with his sword drawn. And most of us, like Joshua, have been asking this question, is he for us or for our enemies? We ask Jesus because in times of crisis, we do not realize that he is the one who is coming for us. So we ask him, are you for us or for our adversaries? 
And Jesus comes and responds in the manner that he always does. Because humanity is Jesus' prized possession. Jesus comes and he tells us that, look, even as you encounter your battles and your challenges in your life, I am still the commander of the Lord's hosts. And I'm not coming for you or against you, but rather I am coming as the commander of the Lord's hosts. My enemy has always been and will always be Satan. And it is him that I'm coming to defeat. It is he that has built this war around your, your declared enemy, in this case Jericho. It is he that has built this fence that seems to make your enemies impenetrable. But I am coming on your behalf to fight this battle for you. And God then mentions to Joshua how Joshua is going to succeed in this battle. Jesus says to Joshua, he says, take off your feet for the place where you're standing is holy ground. And Joshua took off his shoes, his sandals, and there on the ground lay to worship. We all know the end of this interesting story of the Bible. And that is that without even one lifting of a sword, the children of God defeated Jericho. God gave more instructions to Joshua in this moment of prayer on how to win this battle. He told Joshua that the children of Israel were to go around Jericho seven times, and our children, they love to sing that song. Round the walls of Jericho, round the walls of Jericho, round the walls of Jericho, the army went seven times without a stop, seven times without a stop, seven times without a stop, the army went. When the people gave a shout, the walls of Jericho, which seemed impenetrable, came tumbling down. Beloved, it is time for us to adopt the theory and the formula of success that was granted to Joshua, even in difficult times. It is time for us to know that our battles will be fought for us by the commander of the Lord's hosts. It is time for us to be obedient to him because as we are obedient to him, we are fighting not only in our strength, which is weakness in itself, but we are fighting in the strength of the Lord. What the passage of scriptures do not tell us are two important points. And the first one, we will see it in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 16, is that there was the presence of angels. And when the commander comes to fight for us, he doesn't come alone, but he comes with a host, a heavenly host of angels who will fight our battles for us. Second Kings chapter 6, verse 16, Elisha speaking to his servant says, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Verse 17, And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire around Elisha. And this same host of angels that surrounded Elisha was present for Joshua, and they fought the battles, and all Joshua could see after the shouting was the wars tumbling down. But if we can see into the spiritual realm, if we 
can allow the Holy Spirit to open our eyes, we'll be able to see that around us there are angels who are fighting this battle for us. And God is faithful. Each time he comes as the commander of the Lord's hosts, he says it is time for you and me to see these unseen agencies, the angels. In Isaiah chapter 45, verse 22, the Bible tells us something that is also of great importance. And this is that, look to me and be saved, all ye ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. You see, when Joshua was standing there, the moment he lifted up his eyes, he was able to see Jesus. And so Jesus is calling us to lift up our eyes and focus on him. It is time for us to lift our eyes and focus on him because he is God and it is through him that all the ends of the earth will be saved. In Second Chronicles chapter 20 verse 12, we are told the very same thing through the prayer of our great king called Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat, facing great armies around him, turns to his people and asks them to come together to fast and pray to the Lord. And in his prayer, Jehoshaphat says, Our God, O oh our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are on you. When we lift up our heads and we place the focus of our eyes on what Jesus is doing, a miracle begins to happen down here. And it is by lifting up that we see Jesus as the commander of the Lord's hosts. We see Jesus as the one who is fighting our battles for us. It is by placing our eyes on him that we see Jesus as the one who is the healer of healers. Even as we are encountering this COVID-19, we have a healer in Jesus. And as we place our eyes firmly on him, as we see him speaking to us, and God has spoken to us in many ways, he has told us about the new start, to keep our nutrition healthy, to keep exercising, to drink lots of water, to go out in the sunlight, to trust in God, to have fresh air, to rest in a nice manner, and to experience temperance. We will, through this new start, be able to even fight this disease that is going on around us. He is the healer. He is that God who is able to tell us what to do at any given time. But for this time, it is time for us to keep our eyes on him. Because only he is the one who can lift us. Only he is the one who knows the succession of prophetic events that are about to happen. It is only he that is coming to deliver us. It is only he that is the savior of men. Beloved, it is time to keep our eyes on him. The last verse I will read is from the New Testament, the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1 and verse 2. 
And here the Apostle Paul is writing to a generation such as ours which may have forgotten what time it is. The Bible says, We then, as workers, together with him also, plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, In an acceptable time, I have heard you. And in the day of salvation, I have heard helped you. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Beloved, it is time for us to keep our eyes on Jesus because only he can save our souls. May God richly bless you this evening as we continue to worship him and to keep our eyes on him because this is the time for our salvation. Shall we pray together? Our God and our Father, we praise your name. We glorify you because you are the God who understands what time it is. You are the God who knows what challenges we are facing. But you have declared in your word that now is the time for our salvation. May we take full advantage of this time and be saved. This is our prayer and our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. God richly bless you and hope to see you next time.